If I told you so was a person, his name would be Ron Paul. Yeah, let's talk about that. Instead of focusing on winning arguments, we're teaching the basic fundamentals of sales and marketing and how we can use them to win in the world of politics, teaching you how to meet people where they're at on the issues they care about. Welcome to The Brian Nichols Show. Well, happy Thursday there, folks. Brian Nichols here on The Brian Nichols Show. Thank you for joining us on Of Course. Another fun-filled episode. I am, as always, your humble host, joining you live from our Stratus IP studios here in lovely eastern Indiana. Don't let cyber attacks or outdated business technology put your company at risk. Learn more at briannicholshow.com forward slash Stratus IP. Let's talk about this. So I don't know about you guys, but as I go throughout social media or I'm just walking through, name the location in your day-to-day life, I'm hearing a recurring conversation take place. And that is one of... How did we get here? How on earth did we get here? Where the country that we are currently living in looks like a complete fabrication of the country that we all grew up in. It's like somebody took over this country and made it something it's not. Well, there is somebody out there who has been warning us of all this impending doom for quite a number of years now. And uh, as a matter of fact, One of the uh, favorite sayings of us here is Ron Paul was right. So to talk about uh, the different times that Ron Paul had some pretty scary, accurate predictions. We're going to go through eight of them because I could only fit eight into today's episode because there's probably a well over a hundred, but we're going to focus on eight today. And the first being, uh, well, many of you probably remember uh, all too well because uh, it's feeling way too real right now. And that is the housing market crash and the subsequent uh, recession and financial crisis Back in 2008, good old Ron Paul in his book, The Revolution, a Manifesto, which was published back in 2008, he warned of the dangers of the impending housing bubble and the risky practices that were being taken place in, under the financial industry. And as we all know, that prediction came true just months later with the housing market crash and the financial uh, crash hitting as well. What's more is that Ron Paul also predicted that the government would then use this crisis as an excuse to help bail out Wall Street and to increase their control over the economy. And sure enough, how about that? Ron Paul was proven right on that as well with the passage of the 2008 bill from Congress with TARP meant to rescue the financial industry by giving them billions of taxpayer dollars. Number two, another prediction we had here from good old Ron Paul was the inevitable decline of the U.S. dollar. Yes, for years, Ron Paul has warned about the dangers of a weak U.S. dollar and the need to return to a gold standard. And over the past decade, well, it's been longer than that, but more uh, fervently, I guess, over the past decade, we've seen the value of the U.S. dollar decline as the Federal Reserve has pursued loose monetary policies. Couple that with the fact that the U.S. is now running massive deficits and spending trillions of dollars on war and elsewhere, and you have a recipe for disaster. Ron Paul also has argued that cryptocurrency is going to help people avoid government's oppressive policies by creating opportunities for folks to engage in commerce where otherwise government would uh, limit the interactions. Number four, another prediction we hear uh, have here by Ron Paul is about our U.S. government's expanded surveillance state. He consistently warned about the dangers of government surveillance and, yes, the erosion of our privacy rights. And unfortunately, his predictions came true here as well with the revelations about the NSA's surveillance programs and the increasing use of technology for surveillance purposes. He was also a vocal opponent of the war on terror, saying it was the pretext for U.S. intervention in other countries, specifically in the Middle East, and would be a pretext for using uh, government surveillance on its U.S. citizens. Thank you, Edward Snowden. And uh, yes, Julian Assange for revealing those documents there to uh, show the truth. Number five, Ron Paul also warned about the dangers of the U.S. government's expanding national debt and the absolute need for fiscal responsibility. He predicted that the government's failure to address the national debt would inevitably lead to economic problems in the future. And look around us. We're at the threshold of hell, to paraphrase our good friend Clark Griswold. But when we look at the national debt continuing to rise and becoming more and more of a problem for policymakers, heck, we're facing $31 trillion in debt at the time of this recording in 2022. And the U.S. government is still struggling to pay its bills and also to keep up with its interest payments. So, yeah, another big red flag that was predicted by Ron Paul. Number six, another prediction from the great Ron Paul is that about the rise of populism. 
He warned that inevitably the dangers of having a two-party system would lead to a more divisive political viewpoint on the American uh, standpoint. And his predictions did come true. When you see the rise in populist politicians across the United States and, frankly, around the world, Heck, even as a presidential candidate, Ron Paul tapped into some of this populism back in 2012, and he used that to uh, help bolster his campaign. And even though it didn't necessarily lead to success for him, it was taken over by Donald Trump in 2016, who capitalized on that populist movement and those populist sentiments that were growing across the country for those Americans who felt that they were being ignored by their government, or in some cases were being labeled as a basket of deplorables by their government. Number seven. Ron Paul also predicted the two-party system and the media's focus on divisive issues that would lead to that increasing polarization. Yes, populism is the outcome and the polarization was the cause. And yes, this prediction too came true with our political discourse becoming increasingly hostile over the past uh, 10 years, 20 years or so. And really, you look at the national conversation, national divorce has become a common a phrase used across the country, which wasn't even on the, the purview, not even a short five years ago, with so many folks just feeling they have little in common with their fellow countrymen. And finally, Ron Paul has consistently opposed the influence of special interest groups in our government, and as a matter of fact, predicted the impact and outcomes that special interest groups would have not just on the government, but the overall health of our country. And if you look, well, look at the uh, brought to you by Pfizer approach to corporate governance, well, that's really impacted the health of Americans on a physical standpoint as well. But that's a conversation for an entirely different episode. But yes, the influence of special interest groups, namely those big corporate donors, does have a dramatic impact on the American electorate and our American government, all predicted by Ron Paul. So there you have it, folks. There are eight predictions that our uh, fearless leader, Ron Paul, predicted decades ago in many cases, uh, the things that we have either experienced or are currently experiencing today. So whenever you hear someone say, how did we get here? Well, just remind them, not only did it not have to be this way, but there was somebody out there who was raising the red flags and, and sounding the alarm bells many, many years ago, if only you had listened. So Maybe it's important for us to start listening to those who are sounding the alarm bells now. It's important for us, yes, to be consistent in our messaging, in speaking the truth, even when we're looked at like we have three heads, when the experts look at us like we're fools. Don't worry. We have time on our side because just like Ron Paul, many of our predictions will likely come true as well. We've seen over the past two years how fast predictions can come true, how conspiracy theories can go from conspiracy theories one day to literally the next day being headline news. How about that? Well, that's all I had for you. Ron Paul, yeah, uh, his predictions. Let's go ahead and talk more about that. Raise raise up folks like Ron Paul. The reason Bernie Sanders had such, uh, such success in getting folks to be on board with his campaign back in, in 2020 and in 2016, frankly, was because of that consistency. He was able to reflect that he was able to have all these progressive ideas and he voted that way as well. And he was saying the same thing years ago up until he decided to uh, go and want to add to his homes, what, number three, number three home he has now. Um, so yeah, you see right now folks like Bernie Sanders losing the appeal I think it's on us to be able to raise up the appeal of other folks like Ron Paul. Listening to Tim Pool yesterday, I forget the, the guest he had in the show, didn't know who Ron Paul was. He's like, who's Ron Paul? They're like, Rand Paul's dad. He quite literally was the creator of Ron uh, of Rand Paul. And uh, just to see someone who never had the experience to learn who is Ron Paul, what has Ron Paul done, what has Ron Paul been saying was really cool to see. So with that being said, folks, if you got some value from today's episode, do me a favor. Go ahead and give it a share when you do. Tag yours truly at B Nichols Liberty. Also, if you have not had the chance yet to subscribe to our candidate school, we'll get over there because also we're going to be having our brand new ebook that goes along with the class officially launching tomorrow, a uh, how to win your local election written by yours truly. And it is free. Now, for the ebook it, that, itself, you do not have to be a member of Candidate School. This is a free resource to anyone out there who wants to, to learn how to win your local election. From building your campaign team all the way to how do you reach your voters, developing a message, all that in between, we discuss 
in the ebook. Now, we're using the ebook as the course material for Candidate School, which officially started here back at the beginning of the month. And uh, what we're doing in Candidate School, it's $9.95 a month. We're having local candidates, city council candidates, mayoral candidates, legislature candidates, you name the different local offices. We're working with folks who are looking to learn different skills, different strategies, what has worked in the past, what hasn't worked in the past, having roundtable conversations, expert analysis, and more. So if you want to learn not just how to win your local election, but crush your local election, well, yes, make sure you get the brand new free ebook. But also, if you want to go ahead and join our candidate school, go do so at briannicholshow.com forward slash candidate school. And by the way, if you like Brian, I want to be a supporting listener. I don't, I don't want to run for office. Let other folks do that. Well, go ahead, support the show at $1.99 a month. And if you do so, I'll ask for your address and I'll send you one of our awesome bumper stickers here from the Brian Nichols show from our question, everything to don't hurt people and don't take their uh, stuff. We have a lot of different options there. So I'll make sure I send it over to you. If you are one of our supporting listeners over on Patreon, yes, audience insider, $1.99 a month. And otherwise that's all I have for you today. So I'm going to wrap things up there. Yes. If Ron Paul says something, pay attention because nine times out of 10, it's going to come true probably in like 10 years or so. So with that being said, Brian Nichols signing off here on the Brian Nichols show. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to the Brian Nichols show. Find more episodes at briannicholsshow.com.